let's texture our game at this point. So let's go back to the default screen under render settings. We're going to go to shading and uh, change to OpenGL shader language. For our viewport, we're going to send it, set it to textured. I'm going to set my light here to a constant fall off so that everything's lit equally for now. First thing I'm going to do is add an environment. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to add a UV sphere. I'm going to smooth it out and scale that up. So I'm going to press S, let's say 50, enter. Now the sphere faces have a direction. They're not being lit by the light because all the faces are facing outwards. If I enter edit mode by pressing tab and I bring up the properties for the face normals, we see that they're all facing outwards. What we need to do is have the normals face inwards. So we're going to come down here and for under normals, we're going to flip direction. And now we see that our sphere is lit by the light. However, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new texture for that sphere and we're going to make it shadeless because we're going to be using a texture for an environment. Now, an environment texture is quite difficult to create so we're going to borrow one. I'm going to go to Google Images and search for a spherical map. Okay, I found one here at um, openfootage.net. It appears they have a nice image. I'm not going to use the high definition, high resolution, high dynamic range images. I'm just going to use the preview image for our game engine. So I'm going to save this image. Okay, now I'm back in Blender. I'm going to create a new texture. It's going to be an image. And I'm going to load up that image I just saved. Now it's not mapped properly. What I need to do is create my own mapping for this image. Instead of using the generator one, I'm going to use a UDV map. It doesn't exist yet, so I'll go back to edit mode using tab. And under UV mapping, I'm going to unwrap this to a sphere projection aligned to the object. And now we have that sphere mapped with that image we picked up. Okay, since our light's over here, I'm just going to rotate that sphere so that the, the light is mostly lined up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add shadows to our scene, pretending they're coming from the sun using this light. The only kind of light that creates shadows in the Blender game engine are spotlights. So spotlights need to face a specific direction. I'm going to rotate this so that it faces our ground or our play area. And move it so that it covers the entire play area. It doesn't need to line up exactly with the sun as long as it emulates close enough. Okay, so now to turn on the shadows, we're going to go back to the light properties here, and we're going to turn on buffer shadows. They don't line up quite well. You, to do that, you need to go and change the bias here to 0.1. Yeah, that's good enough. Also, the shadows and the objects in the shade are very dark, so there should be some ambient light here. I'm going to add an ambient light using a lamp, hemisphere lamp. I'm going to set this light to reflect the ambient light that would be provided by the sky, so it should be bluish. And I'm going to set the intensity be fairly low, so that's just an ambient light. Okay, good. Now let's texture our ground. Let's go look at a texture. Let's go take another texture from the internet. So I'm going to look for grass, and I'm actually going to look for seamless tiling grass. Okay, let's see. There's one at Filter Forge here. Let's see what they have. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to take this grass image, save that. I also noticed they had a normal map 
for that grass image. So we're also going to save that. It's going to provide an interesting texture for that grass. Okay, so now let's add a texture for a ground. We'll do a new image. And we're going to use the grass texture we just downloaded. Again, we're going to have to map this properly ourselves. Instead of using the generated one, we're going to use UV. We still we have to create one. Before I do that, I'm going to apply the scale. Control A scale. And now I'm going to enter edit mode using tab. UV unwrap shortcut is U. And this time I'm going to do a smart project. And now we have a nicely UV mapped plane. The texture, however, is uh, very large, but it was a seamless tiling texture, so we can tile it, let's say, 10 times within this area. And that looks good. Looks close enough to get the grass. It's a little bright to reflection, so the specular color, I'm going to have it contribute a bit less. Okay. Now, we also download a normal map, so let's go get, let's create an image texture, load our grass normal map, and we'll also need to change the coordinates to UV and scale it 10 times just like we did the other one. Now, this won't be contributing to color, instead it will be contributing to normal. And on our image sampling, we also need to say normal map there. And now we have sort of a grass textured grass. That looks okay. Actually, I might reduce the normal map a bit here. Okay, good. Now, the only other thing I notice now that we've added grass is um, there's still black areas in our structure here because there's no light reaching that area. What I'm going to fake is another, using another ambient light hemisphere. I'm going to fake light reaching into there, which would be diffuse light bounce off the, the grass. So I'm going to rotate that so it faces upwards. And I'm going to give it a color, a green color to represent the grass. And I'm going to reduce the intensity quite a bit because it's again just some ambient light. Okay, very well. Now let's texture our planks. For our planks, we're going to assign a procedural texture of wood. Now, procedural textures cannot be used directly in the game engine. However, we can use the Blender Render Engine to create a procedural texture and bake it. To do this, uh, first I'm going to start by selecting my structure here and rotating it so that it faces the sun a bit on an angle. I'm going to select one of my planks and align the view to the plank and align the camera as well so that I can test rendering using the Blender Render which is F12. Now by default the wood is not wood procedural wood is not set up. You need to create a color ramp made out of wood colors to be to make, to make it look like wood. So I'm going to start adding some colors here, which are wood inspired. And you can see with just making a few changes already, it starts to look more like wood. I'm going to change the wood texture to sawtooth, ring noise. I'm going to reduce the turbulence to 2.5. Try that out. It's looking better. I'm going to reduce the rings on X and increase them on Y and Z. So I'm going to reduce the size of the rings on X, increase them on Y and Z. Try that. Okay, that's starting to look much better now. What I'm going to do is just perfect my color ramp here until I'm satisfied. Okay, now I'm pretty satisfied with what I've done with the colors now. So you can start to create all sorts of variations uh, with these textures, modifying any of these parameters. 
and you can create an infinite number of textures using procedural. You can go switch to band noise so we don't have any rings, etc. But once we're satisfied with what we've done, we can basically bake what we've created as a procedural texture onto bake this 3D procedural texture onto this 2D uh, on a 2D image which will be wrapped around this 3D object. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to edit mode and we're going to unwrap, which is U, our plank using Smart Project. Now by default, I just switched to a UV image editor. It brought up the render results, which I'm going to close now. And here we see our UV unwrapping onto a image size. I'm going to add a new image, we'll call it wood one. We don't need the alpha map here. Okay, now we're going to go to the Render Properties tab and we're going to scroll all the way down and find the Bake button. We just want to bake textures, increase the margins, and bake that. And there we have it. We've baked our texture onto an image map which can be used in the game engine. So we're going to save this image. Okay, now we can come back to our procedural texture, get rid of it. To add a new texture for our plank, and this time it'll be an image map. And now we can open the file we saved. And of course, we have to set the coordinates back to UV coordinates, and then that looks correct. I've also saved out a black and white version of this texture and converted it into a normal map to add some texture exactly to our planks. So I'm going to load that normal map I've created. I have to select normal map and use the UV coordinates. And that's not mapped to color, but normal. And I'm going to reduce the normal mapping. So there we have it. Now we have a texture to our wood. And it looks pretty good. So we can change back to our game now and tests it using the P key. So you now we have quite a bit of texturing in our, our game. All we're missing is our spheres. Our projectile spheres need to be textured. But everything else is looking pretty good so far. OK, what I've done now is I've created two spheres uh, for my projectiles. I've created a a small light sphere. Well, actually, they're both the same size, but I've created a light sphere, which is bouncy, and a heavy sphere, which is has a hot, bigger mass. And uh, for the texture, I've just created a simple texture, which is a grid pattern with my channel name on it. So the mass of this one is 2, and the mass of this one is 5. And I've also made this one more elastic, and this one less elastic. So to test that out, I'm going to send these to a different layer because these are the spheres that are going to be spawned. And I've also changed some code for my launcher. If I go back to the game engine here, the game logic for the launcher, I have now have left mouse button will launch sphere 1 and right mouse button will launch sphere 2 with the same timing logic I created before. I can actually Turn it on here. If I press P to try the game logic, there's our bouncy sphere, our lighter mass bouncy sphere, and here's our heavier mass sphere. So that one will create more damage, and this one will create less damage. So now we have two different spheres with two different mass levels, and pretty well a completed game.